I've been given, we've been given the green light, Liam, so it's a, it's an exclusive, mate. You get to go first. You know me coming at the end, but... Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Let, 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 the, let the guys who are like putting their hands up for the teacher to go first all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, look, uh, Manu, did he make it back in the training pad paddock this week? What's the story yeah. there? No, he, he made it back into the training ground, but not in the training paddock. But he should be training next week. Um, I touch base with England and we'll, we'll make the call on that over the weekend. That was the that was the conversation I had with Richard Hill, who's the team manager. So we'll we'll see how it goes back end of this week. And uh, yeah, then it'll be it'll be England's call at the end of the day because technically he's their player, isn't he, at this point? So, so are you suggesting that he could be called straight back into the England camp for the game next week? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, he could. Who knows? He could. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, any, any update on how he's feeling? I mean, what, what's his mood like this week? Uh, given he's going to take an extra an extra rest week, so to speak, to make sure it's right. Yeah, eternally positive. He's like really smiley as he always is. Um, yeah, seems seems good. Seems on it. I need, I need to like have a proper sit down mm. with him and see where his head's at. Uh, I'll do that on Friday. Given the, yeah, just given that it'll be up for selection, potentially start of the week. Okay, fingers crossed it'll all go well from. Um, look, last weekend you had a number of players taken off in that game against Exeter. What, what was that like? Just having to manage all that on, on the touchline when you're losing players like that out of the blue. You don't. You, injuries are part of the game, but like to, to have to happen like that, you know what I'm saying? In a big match against Exeter, just what was that like on, on the sideline? You know. Um. Yeah, it was it was hectic, wasn't it? It was really uh, <laughs> you uh, you're just putting out fires, aren't you? Because we yeah, it was you go in with a plan, you go in the plan for the replacements and people you know who, who may be carrying little niggles or whatever who've been fatigued in the week or been carrying the sniffles, as I said pre-game, um, and then for for those things to happen, not like everyone's got a plan until the first shots fired. It it just went out the window, and we were trying to just. Uh, Manage collateral damage. Um, we, we, I'm not making excuses. We we had a few ill people last week. Um, we went into the game not having not really been the best of them, having prepped well enough or been at top form. And then when you do that, particularly a team like ourselves that rely on physicality and being on the front foot, you tend to come off second best in the collisions, which we did in that first half. When you come off second best in collisions in a game of that physicality, then you get the odd head knock, head knock. So I think there was a, a cut like a perfect storm, a culmination of a little bit of sniffles, not being quite there, and then um taking those hits, which would normally be on the front foot or on the back foot, um, which resulted in kind of three HIAs and uh hookers playing in the back row for the left for the second half. But we made do and I was pretty proud of their efforts. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of talk at the moment, like Thomas Francis going playing for um, Wales on Friday night about, about HIAs and concussion and the whole lot. I mean, you, 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 you'd be immensely pleased with how you handled your situations last, last Sunday and everybody's in, in, in was taking best 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 of care, you know, and everyone, everyone's fine going forward here. That should yeah. be a debate over how they were handled, et cetera, and the whole lot, that everything was thumbs up, you know? Yeah, I was asked that recently, like, are you happy with how it's how it's been handled? I think I am at the moment. Everyone's passing the tests. There's no, like, lingering effects, which means they were looked after as best they could. You know, even Cam Neal, let's take Cam Neal, for instance, who, who was clearly sparkled, um, to use the medical term. Uh, he, uh, he, he's, he passed his HIA straight after the game. Technically, he can play this weekend, but the medical team said no, said it's not right. Like when you when you're obviously that concussed and you're taking that bigger shot, we've got a duty of care over these lads to to give him that extra time, that extra week to make sure he's he's fully right. So he won't be involved this weekend. Much to his disappointment, he wants to play, but we made that call. Okay, yeah, just to switch change your tack completely. You brought Tom Barrow in there last month out, out of the blue out of retirement he, he had two he had two games so far hasn't been seen in, in, in recent weeks I'm just wondering how is he progressing given he's, he's such a long time away from the game and to come out of retirement is it, it, kind of unusual isn't it yeah it is unusual 
but he probably retired, retired or had his sabbatical from the game at the best of time with him because uh, of COVID. So we didn't miss a lot of rugby when everyone else would usually be progressing their game and getting fitter and stronger. He was out at that time, kind of finding um, himself in terms of what he wanted out of life during that period. So he he chose his, it, well, however, life, um, COVID and all his circumstances played into his hands for his time off. He, he hasn't been involved the last couple of weeks because when he came on, he he, um, he jammed his knee together and got a, like a mini fracture, like a little bone fracture on his knee, which was only a two or three week thing. So he would have been involved the last couple of weeks as well, which shows you how, how, how much we rate him and how far he's come. He was, he's surprised me. It, we, it came on a, it came on a, a loan trial agreement for six weeks. And after a week, seeing him move and talk and, because he was obviously off it, but just his movement and talk in, in within a week, I'm like, no, you're good. We want you. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll sign you. Like, we'll, your future's here just to give him some kind of stability. Um, that was a week in after he come back, which kind of shows you um, the work that he'd done away from here, from anywhere, to, to get himself up to speed. So he'd, he'd been, he, di he didn't come in fresh. He came in I've been done runs around the park and he's been talking to himself with rugby language. So he'd look like a crazy person apparently whilst he's running around his local park. Um, he's really, really studious because he's been working nine to five and a little bit longer with his company. He now sees a rugby day as too short a day for him to fulfil his potential. So he's first in, last out. So he's catching up on all that lost time that he spent through an increased work ethic of what the real world's like. And in terms of his maturation, um, you often find that the rugby bubble is just that. People, players now go from school into an academy whilst they're at school, into a professional environment, and that's all they've known. Uh, and as a result, they, they're not as well-rounded as a person as you find from those who have retired, who, who have worn a few scars through life, who to understand what it is to be resilient. Um, he has fast-tracked, fast-tracked, sorry, not tracked, fast-tracked all of that um, through the time that he spent on reflection for what he wants and what he values in life, not just sport. So the conversations I have with him tend to be a little bit deeper and um, more on a level of, say, peers, as opposed to kind of coach player, because he's, he's had that, that experience away from the club, uh, which is why, again, I think he's going to be a great, great signing for us. I think, I think we'll see the best of him. I really do. That's the aim. Like, I think we'll see the best of him. And in an age where second rows of his size and calibre are like teddy bear shit, he's just walked through the front door. Like, can't believe my luck. So we, we both talked about the only thing that could really derail him because physically he's there, mentally he's on it. It's really smart lad. The only thing that could derail him is if he loses his, his, his passion and his, and his want and desire to, to play the game, if he gets disenfranchised again. Um, uh, so that's, that's my job and is to make sure we, that he stays on track in, in motivational terms. Okay, and just finally for me then, you mentioned about winning the collisions, et cetera, there against Exeter. Was that just the way that that, that game unfolded, et cetera, and it's like a work on now for the week going forward, or, or, or is there something much deeper than that? What, what, what's, your, what's your take on it now that you've had a chance to review that game? No, we were off it, Liam. We were fractions of a second off it. That's all you need to be in terms of setting, in terms of getting off the line, on the back foot a lot of the time. Um, our urgency. In, in all areas of the game was poor and you know that's when you've got all those different when you when you look across the board and you just off it in every area it's too much to fix uh, at half time which was what we put to the lads it, you know as as rough as we felt and as sorry for ourselves as we felt we we talked heatedly at half time about how we can fix all those things with a shift in mentality how we can be quicker around the corner, be faster off the line, 
uh, and measure ourselves on our intent in the second half and not our lack of it in the first. And even and even through the illness, you, you saw the difference it made. Uh, and, and a lesson learned again. Okay, cheers, Alex. Good luck. Good luck this weekend. Thank Thanks. you. Cheers, mate. Hey, Paul. Hi, Alex. All right. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, not bad, thank you. Not bad. Listen, I just wanted to ask you about um, changing the law this season where they, um, you know, if you drive the ball over the line and don't ground it, you don't yeah. get a scrum, you get a, um, you get a, the other team gets a drop. I don't know. Now, the aim seems to be to try and encourage teams to be, use more wits when they get closer to the line rather than power. But, it doesn't seem to have worked. Looking at looking at the stats this evening, from your point of view at, at, at Sale, has it has it made a difference? Uh, in in what sense? In terms of more tries, uh, but as the as a as a deterrent for sort of driving driving balls, especially um, keep keeping the ball close, um, you know, as you get to the line and being prepared to, you know, to back yourself and to to, to get over and not be worried about about being held up and conceding a drop out. Well, it's definitely changed um, the methodology and maybe some of the mentality of how you attack very close when it's not a mall. You know, the uh, the pick and go kind of double latch, um, repetitive bore you to death. <laughs> um, Five meter attack. I think that that has that has shifted from ones where you're looking at speed of ball as opposed to just waiting numbers. So it, right. it it's shifted that emphasis. But um, yeah, I guess in I guess five meters out. Thankfully, the mall is still a, a traditional weapon. Um, thankfully for Gloucester, hey, because they're pretty yeah. good. Yeah, <clears throat> they did. Yeah, they 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 worked a lot. So, so, because it, you know, it's almost sort of um, the same time as that. They introduced the fifty twenty two, which encourages you to to to, <clears throat> to bounce the ball into touch, and the opponent's twenty two, and you get a you get a liner, which is <laughs> almost encouraging you to to go for the ball and drive for the line. The what? The fifty twenty two. Yeah. So, so, so at the same time as they, yeah. they, if you get held up, you can see the drop. They have a fifty twenty two, which is almost sort of encouraging you to kick for touch, and then drive a line up. Well, I mean, that's one way of looking at it, isn't it? Is the space there to kick from your own half into those yeah. coffin corners. The, the other side of it, as you know, is for defensive teams to to make sure that they've got cover there and yeah. their backfield, which would open up space to run. Um, yeah. We, we played around with it in the pre-season and looked at the Southern Hemisphere teams and, and actually realised that it it really doesn't have that much of an effect with outcomes, in terms of outcomes and all the games that we analyse. So not to put too much emphasis on it, we don't put too much emphasis on it in the, from a training yeah. perspective. Yeah, so, so, so in that sense, not an awful lot has changed. Yes. Yeah, because because again, you know, there, there are there are still lots of tries being being scored from close range. You still, the probability sways towards teams who spend more time in opposition twenty two, and the outcomes that come off the back of that, they, that that's still by far and away the best play, the best way to exploit possession in terms of where where you play. Um, it, like I say, it's had a it's had a greater effect on some teams who, who use that method of just a pick and go to a scrum. If you get held up to a pick and go to a scrum, uh, it has had a it's had a bigger effect on some of those teams in the Premiership to change the methodology. Do you think it might have made more of a difference if the dropout had been a twenty two dropout rather than under the posts? Because in, the, in effect, <clears throat> you're getting the ball back. Instead, instead of a five-metre scrum, you're getting probably 35, 40 metres out. But you yeah, it's, getting... it's, a good, look, it's a good attacking position, especially if you get quick ball, you know, like kind of 20 metres in from touch and open up that blind side. It's a good vantage point. Not if it was 22, no, because... Oh, you mean... Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, the more, the more likely to, to, to zing it wide, yeah. 
Yeah. But then, you, but then any kind of attacking advantage is is waylaid, isn't it? By yeah. By the fact that if you do get held up or you knock it on, you, you're back around the halfway line. I think that there's, yeah. there's some element of rugby which I do appreciate the sustained pressure that you're able to do, that you're able to um, put on a team through camping, if you like, in a, in, a, in a certain area. It's just how you use the ball for entertainment's sake. Um, yeah. I think is, um, is 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 what needs to be looked at. Yeah, because because they, they the, I mean the way they justified it was, I mean you got the entertainment factor, but also the safety factor that they're trying to, with concussion, with all the you know, a lot of them coming through, you know the increased number of rocks over the years, trying to if you get it a bit wider away from from that sort of bashing contact, it might make it a safer game. Is that is that the right way to approach law changes? Sir? Oh, we're getting into a bit of minefield there. I need to know the biomechanics of where most of the concussions are caused because mm -hmm. obviously increased contact, increased risk, increased chance, but it's the it's the it's the nature of that contact. And when when you're looking at those pick and go drives and everything's close quarters, uh, as opposed to when you get people swinging around the tackle and people step in and, and altering body height and people diving for tackles and putting arms out, you, you, it, it might be that there's an increased risk from those types of collisions as opposed to yeah. ones which are closer on the gain line where you have less acceleration, there's actually less, in, less impact. It's more about weight, isn't it? And body yeah. height, and those closer contacts as it is to uh, the spaces and the, uh, and the acceleration and the speed at which you, you engage with the contact in the wider channels. So, yeah, it, that's an interesting debate and probably something they should look into, I guess. It is, yeah, because I mean, a, a number of the recent red cards have, have been out wider than him. And the lag of the Bristol Wings picked up a couple you know, in, the, in the last few weeks. So, what you're saying there is it sort of bears that out. Yeah, because it's, ju it's just more difficult to drop your body eye um, when you go in full speed. To, to yeah. you, you know, you're, you're certainly not as in control as you would be if it was a, a square collision where you're head on and you're already starting from a low position, which you would be on a, on a pick and go or, or, or something off nine. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Alex. Cheers, Paul. Good luck on the weekend. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we could do with this one. That's us, lads. That's us.